Eh, after what we did before, I was feeling hoppy. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. Last time, we went through the Middle Ages more, the unexplored continent of the Northern Ruins, and we got some closure for Frog. Or sorry, uh, Glenn, I guess is what we're gonna be calling him now. He just got all around buffed. This time, solar energy was used eons ago, long before Lavos was discovered as a source of power. It might be just the thing we need to combat him. Luca is up next. In more ways than she knows. There's more to the events on Death Peak than what we saw, and I've purposely been saving it for this time to talk about it, just out of not wanting to break things up too much. Marum was in the party at the end of Death Peak, so she got all the spotlight. But what happens if she's not there and Luca is? This is it, the summit of Death Peak. You who fear the night and fight the coming of darkness, lend us strength. Chrono. The pendant's reacting. Whoever is in the party in slots number one and two, with the exception of Magus, will be the ones to play out the sequence of events if Marl is not present. Magus might not care if Chrono comes back to life. However, it was all for naught. We changed nothing. There is somebody here whom I'm sure he'd very much like to save if we did have a doppel doll of them. There's nothing to be checked from the others, just Chrono. Chrono, it's about time. Oh, Sir Chrono, it is a relief to have you with us again. You big dummy. Y you wouldn't believe what we had to go through for you. up like that again, and you'll have to get yourself out of it. We had such a terrible time without you, Marl was, and so then we, and even I, hey, you listening, Chrono? I really, really can't stand you, you know? Aw, uh, she's one of those... sun dares. That alternate version of the scene will happen if Luca is the party leader and Marl is not present. If neither Luca nor Marl are present, you don't get the hug. Since we love little details like so... Ha, <laughs> look at you. Ladies weeping over you left and right. You've returned. Have you a need for my sword? Frog's, or sorry, Glenn's text. Gotta get used to that. I don't think I've really ever done this before. I just have seen other people say that they do it when we come full circle with his character, and I thought it was something really beautiful, so that's kind of why I went for it. Yeah, his text changed back now that we completed his quest. As for someone else... Chrono, Chrono, Chrono! Fight Lavos, strong armor, Ayla Village have, go see! Ayla is the only one who never realizes when her quest is finished. <laughs> I don't know if they intended that. I don't know if they meant for it to be that way, because you can technically go get the armor anytime, even if you've already been there once, and it's not a quest per se. But wow, that's funny. <laughs> Luca, take Ayla. Uh, you heard the woman. Take her along. I want her in the party for this, actually. Boy, Chrono, why'd you even bother coming back to life if we don't need you for anything? 
he did keep up with in levels with the rest of the party being in the 40s, and that's part of why I was so worried. Um, before um, before we fought Specchio, which by the way, Specchio should be a fair deal stronger now, actually. Uh, no. Instead, I'd rather talk about benign details. When talking to Chrono in the end of time, will you take Chrono? Is what the narrator says in place of him. This was not always the case, however. In the beta of Chrono Trigger, there was a feature that was such a neat concept, but I kind of get why it was dropped. So Chrono is silent for the most part. We know what kind of guy he is. He's definitely had his personality inferred by lots of other things, but he's never really allowed to talk normally. If you were to talk to him in the end of time in this beta, the party leader would ask Chrono if you wanted to come along and they each had different lines for it. And then in the same style of text box, the player would answer for him. It was a neat kind of fourth wall breaky way of getting around the fact that he's not supposed to talk. And I do kind of wish they kept it. I just get that it might've been kind of confusing and it would have made players double take for a second at what was actually going on. Sort of like in Majora's Mask, how a lot of people think that green text that says Link is Link talking, but there's technically no disproving it because he's not on screen when it shows it. I don't know. It's just one of those fun little details. We're going to go to 2300 AD in the future. Come on, Epoch. Much more qualified driver this time. Before we do anything else, I want to check the tech list just to make sure I'm not missing out on anything. Lucas had Flare for a while and hasn't gotten a chance to use it. Same with Antipode Bomb 3. My reason for having Magus in the party was a fun strategy that can be done coming up soon. He doesn't have the tech for it and he's not close to learning it, so no sense having him in the party. I recommend having Magus in as much as you possibly can because he's got to fill out his tech list like everybody else and he's very behind. But Lucas had Flare for a while, we've had Antipode Bomb 3 for a while and have not used it on anybody, so maybe the opportunity will arise itself. Luca's vision showed us this island to the south that was not accessible through any means before. Wow, what rich billionaire built a skyscraper by itself on a private island with nothing else around it? <laughs> Somebody with way too much time on his hands for flying around in his favorite helicopter, I guess. Before going forward, whichever party you settle on, I don't care who it is, but I do care enough to tell you, have ruby armor or Taban suit. Whichever. Anything that reduces fire damage. Absolutely have it. This is one of the reasons that I went and took care of Aelis first before doing this one, because there is great benefit to it. This is a very zealy looking place, similar to what we saw um, back in Antiquity Times. Gonna heal up real quick. I'm just making everything sound really scary, aren't I? I don't mean to scare you. I'm just telling you, be prepared. This Effin thing! The son of the sun. Or son of sun if you're playing the original translation, because I just gotta get that dig in there. It has five flames around it. One of them is the real flame. If you hit the real flame that is part of its body, then you will do lots of damage to the main body. Regular attacks are the name of the game because the damage just gets passed on through. Any attack that hits all enemies is very ill-advised. It knows Flare, just as Luca does, but thankfully with our equipment spread the way it is, we're fine. This was a fight that I lost in my first playthrough. And it utterly sucked having to redo so much because I hadn't saved in a while. I know that without, it goes without saying after you play for, you know, any, any amount of video games for a long period of time, you know, that you just need to save frequently. I know that a lot of people are going to tell me that I really should have been saving anyway, but it was just kind of jumping from side quest to side quest. I had to play Frog's Hole Quest all over again because it had just been that long and I wasn't used to things being hard. He has a black plate on him, one of those items that could only previously be gotten from the pendant. And I can't say he this time because it is a son of the sun. Flame counterattack. Okay, if there's anybody you're hitting with flames, I'm glad it's Luca. Marl, how about you? Don't know. I didn't want to hit number two. You can't hurt him directly without, you know, anything bad happening, as you will see right here. Yeah, he just misses. Um, that's gonna be a fakie. Probably better heal up. The downside of this party is just no good way of, um, no good way of. Oh 
no, that bad, that bad, that bad. Well, what do you, uh, well, okay. There's a chance to use a rise. Look on the bright side. Huh, get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was saying we probably wouldn't get a chance to use that. Now we shall, it made a lot of sense to use. If that could get through, yes, that's the right one. Good, it's the first one. One that takes the least amount of time to scroll over. Another thing I don't like about this fight, and it is a problem specific to this version, is how the interface for targeting enemies is on the bottom screen. So unless you shift your eyes constantly, it's kind of awkward to tell which flame is going to get attacked because you can't just move the D-pad in the direction that you would want to target, like in the... Um, it's, it's just not as easy as in the Super Nintendo version where the interface is on screen because I don't like playing with the other interface because the font is so tiny that it's just kind of hard to do. He has a regular attack, so of course, always keep healing up. I'm going to keep the heat on. No pun intended. I should be ashamed of myself for not intending that one because it's actually a pretty good one. Uh, come on. It's always the funniest ones that I don't even think of and then I say it afterward and I'm like, wow, I wish I was smart enough to think of that one. Uh, give me that damage. And it's just kind of a slow grind. Now that he's spun around again and I don't have an easy way of clocking damage on him guaranteed, then we might as well do that. Uh, Son of Sun is losing his light. We'll attack the first one again. There isn't really any way to do this. Um, the strategy I was talking about with Magus is on this fight. He doesn't know the tech, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to wait to show you that another time. But trust me, Magus does have a way of really cheesing this fight that I'm sure those of you that have got game overs to this guy and had to redo a lot of stuff like I did would love to hear about. I'll tell you about it whenever we can do it. Ayla's level increased. Chase down that bouncing eyeball. You think you're cute? Well, I got news for you. Disembodied eyeballs cannot grow up to be cute. But they can grow up to be rocks. <laughs> this, this is the ancient sunstone. It looks like it's been drained of all its energy. We could probably recharge it with sunlight, but that could take eons. The Moonstone. The people of Zeal knew about the Moonstones and how you could bathe them in sunlight to cause them to absorb tons and tons of the sun's energy, and this was their power source up until they found Lavos' energy instead. So now, if we need as much time to pass as humanly possible, we might as well go all the way back and bathe it in the sunlight from there. In the upper right is the Sun Shrine that we checked out very briefly when we had access to the Dactyls. Sunlight reaches this location 24 hours per day. 24 hours per day. You're, you're sure that the Sun shines in a location 24 hours per day, Robo? We should now return to my era in the Epic. I come back with Magus, Chrono, and Marl to show a very obscure bit. Those lines aren't special, but in the Super Nintendo original, they are. Magus does not have any dialogue written for this part, meaning that it will glitch check for Marl's dialogue instead. So I'd like you to imagine Magus saying, look at the sunlight, this must be the sun's favorite place. Now all that's left is a quick hop on the epoch. Back in 12,000 BC, this is one of the only three tiny pieces of land not destroyed by Lavos. How convenient. It's indeed still here. 600 AD. Still there. And there's even a strength capsule for being so diligent in checking on it. Uh, I've been giving these to Ayla and everyone else for so long and it feels so good to be able to stuff these in your gullet again. Uh, come here, bud. I love you and you never even said a dang word to me. Brings me back to high school. 1000 AD. It's gone! The Moonstone is gone! if someone from this time period took it. Out of everyone that we've met in 1000 AD, if you think about anybody who is dishonest, deceitful, or all around just a horrible human being, there is one that comes to mind. I know it's not the Chancellor, but this guy's also in politics. Their house is emitting sparkles of energy. <laughs> Moonstone? Never heard of it. 
Daddy loves money more than he loves me. Ugh, man, kid, some things never change. I hate my dad more than anyone in the whole world. He refuses to say anything. The children are slipping away from us. It's painful to see. Nothing we can do here. It's not abundantly clear what needs to be done. Since we got a time machine, it's just so cool you gotta circumnavigate the whole planet to reach the speed necessary to pierce time. Just one revolution of Earth is enough to do it. We'll see if we can learn anything from his ancestors. If only I had some spiced jerky. What a wondrous meal I could make. The time has come at long last to fulfill the need for jerky. In the present time, Snail Shop, all that time ago was this dude. I've got some spice jerky, but I've been saving it for a special occasion. I'm gonna go for, say, 9900G. I was bad at Now there's a customer with good taste. Here you go. I love spicy jerky. You know, I got some downstairs in the pantry. I think I might go eat that after this. It's like, I love beef jerky. It's just expensive. It's the only thing about it, but oh gosh, now I'm hungry for it. It actually has sriracha sauce in it as well. And, uh, it's making my mouth water, man. Ugh, I sound Scottish. Oh, th is that not spiced jerky you're carrying? Might you part with it for 10,000 G? This is a 10 gold profit that could be taken. But where's the love in that? Truly? Oh, th thank you. I, I thought kindness and sharing gone from this world altogether. I'll teach my children from your example. There are things greater in life than money. Right then, I'd best start cooking. You're interested in the Moonstone? A passing traveler left it here. By all means, take it. It seems to be important to you folks. Help the needy, share and share alike. Thinking about making that the town motto. I love my daddy. My dad is my favorite person in the whole world. I wish my husband were just a touch less generous. I mean, it wouldn't kill him to save a little for us, would it? Everybody says daddy's magnanimous, but he says he's just big boned. This is so precious and wholesome. I, the first time that I ever saw him say these words, and then I saw the girl immediately after saying that, that her daddy was her favorite person. Oh, it, uh, it just, it really got me unexpectedly. I wasn't expecting to just, it was, it was one of those unexpected emotional moments where I wasn't expecting just this ass of a mare to affect me in any way. It made me feel like I was doing something important. I just didn't see it coming and being so sweet. We'll place the Moonstone back where it belongs. And golly, I hope it only needs exactly 2,300 more years to finish charging up. So about this quest, now that you see what it's all about, it definitely does stand out as the only time that you do something like this. Where you have to check on this item in every time period and see what happens to it and make sure that it stays on the correct pathway. The developers very specifically made sure that there was only one side quest of this of the sort. Uh, with energy like this, I should be able to make a powerful weapon. Let's take it back to my house. They thought that it would feel like errands if every side quest was plant this flag in this time period. Check on it again and again. First, we'll extract the Sunstone's energy and convert it to a more manageable form. Then, we'll just vacuum pack it into a cartridge. What I'm trying to say is I can see what they mean. It would feel like errands if you were just constantly time traveling to check on things all the time, and I'm glad it's the only time it happens. I ended up loving this side quest because it was the only one of its kind and it was so unique and it played with the concept so much. They're careful with that thing, Luca. You're, <laughs> she's, yeah, we all know Ayla's got a thick skull. She'll be fine. The Wonder Shot. Is Luca's ultimate weapon, question mark? Take a look at this, Luca. I borrowed a bit of the sunstone to create something nifty of my own. Obtained sunglasses. <laughs> uh, good wordplay. 
First, the wonder shot, because it's complicated. Oh boy, is it complicated. So it says that playtime determines damage, and it does buff her attack by a lot, so I'll definitely put that on. The problem with it is no one really seems to know what this item does. Even though it raises her attack stat, you can see it has a status called random damage on it. Guides are very inconsistent on this, and no one really seemed to know what it is. This is a case of an item that desperately needed a better description. I've seen people claim that it's minutes of playtime, I've seen people claim that it's hours of playtime, or the chances for good damage go up the longer your current play session goes on for. None of this is correct. I personally talked to hackers who know their way around the game, and they were able to dig up the section of memory that references your playtime to calculate damage. It is, believe it or not, based on your seconds of playtime. Something that cannot be viewed in-game or referenced during a battle. A zero in the ones place of the seconds of your playtime will cause this weapon to do one-tenth the normal damage. One or two is half. Three or four is normal. Five or six is meant to be a 1.5 times multiplier, but instead it loads a garbage value and is random hovering and is a random number hovering around normal damage. Seven to eight seconds is double damage, and a nine is 2.5 times damage. I feel like this is an example of the rule of large numbers, where you're only going to feel like your luck is bad toward the beginning of a play session, but as time goes by, the instances of normal and excess damage are going to outnumber the failures, and you feel like something is improving when it's just constant probability. This weapon also is further confusing in that it has a new critical hit rate, and it's the only item in the game that doesn't tell you this. It raises Lucas' critical hit chance to 40%. If I can demonstrate this on a few random Joes, we'll go to Guardia Forest and show that on enemy number one, Luca does a critical hit of 738, a regular hit of 39, and a regular hit for 374. This weapon is meant to be her ultimate weapon, but it's just so strange. I think I'll have it on for a while just to kind of see how it plays out for me, but I've never been a fan of it. I'll give it a chance for you, though. Who knows? Maybe it'll surprise me like a certain lucky sandwich did. Oh, yeah, we had another item to talk about. I, I was so caught up in wanting to talk about this because I was wanting to share what this thing actually does because it just seems to be such an enigma on the internet that I wanted to put to rest. The sunglasses. First of all, here's the official artwork. The only time the official artwork has ever looked superior to the in-game artwork, at least as far as I'm concerned. They boost damage. Another terrible item description. My, what a trend we have going today. This increases all damage done by the holder by 25%. That sounds actually worth it over having the silver stud to lower her MP consumption, considering she has so much of it. I'd like to thank Chrono Trigger hacker Moron for giving me all of this information, because... Really, without them, I would have had no idea what any of this stuff did, because every source was inconsistent on it, so thank you for being the reason that I can put this to rest. And now, that's... everything, really. That's Lucas Quest knocked out. Great boon of items, no chance of using all those dual and triple techs, because it didn't involve all that much fighting, and the one battle that we had, a regular attack was just as good as using attack, and we didn't want to screen nuke all the enemies, so... no real opportunity to do anything. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we return to the end of time and see if we can help a certain Mr. Grumpy Pants. See you guys then.